name is Stampy. Hi guys, hey guys. One million tickets to surprise. One million Boston Army members. The legends are uniting. But what are you watching? How's it going, Rose? My name's Jared. We're playing Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Here we go. Oh, people are shooting at me, Rose. You're watching someone play Call of Duty and talk about it? PewDiePie. This is Pixelated. I'm going to bring in a weekly guest. We'll be playing some games, having some fun. I'm going to bring in a weekly guest. We'll be playing some games, having some fun. I'm going to bring in a weekly guest. We'll be playing some games, having some fun. Hello, my name's Jack Howard. And I'm Dean Dobbs. We're here today to play with the Google app. So I partnered up with Lenovo, and they are sending me to Marrakesh. Yes! Tu vas voir la bande annonce de à la poursuite de demain et pour encore plus de futur. Bootcamp was pretty awesome because this is the first time I managed to get together under the same roof with a bunch of international creators and to just sort of see that exchange of ideas to be able to receive a ton of ideas. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. My name is Mike Butcher. I'm with TechCrunch, and uh, we have a wonderful panel. And we're going to be talking now about content online, making content, um, becoming a brand, and effectively in many ways. And uh, we have a wonderful panel. Uh, uh, Rene, Kone, Este. Everyone uh, is uh, involved in uh, creating. New format. Now, let me start with you, Rene. So, Make Studios is incredibly world famous now because of its, its, its. Um, you know, obviously acquired by YouTube and acquired by Google. Uh, but um, you guys now, you, you, you're kind of quite independent, aren't you? And I think that's one of the things that probably we should get across right now is that, is that you're making content for anyone at this point. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, we're acquired by Disney, by the way. Yeah, sorry, uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, yes, I mean, we are making content with our big talent and stars uh, on a regular basis. Uh, they're creating content, and we are producing lots of originals. I think we have around 200 shows uh, in production just this year. Uh, it's a very important part of our business, and also being now part of Disney, creating formats with talent and, and growing talent uh, uh, beyond just being one channel or one uh, piece of content is hugely important for us. How are you considered inside Disney? I mean, they, do they think you guys are crazy? I mean, we're, we're pretty independent, uh, as, as you mentioned in your intro. Um, but I think they look at us and they see this is part of a, a new wave of content and formats that they need to be part of, and that's why they acquired us. So, for you guys out there, we, think, we thought that it would be a great idea is if we introduce uh, these stars uh, and give you some idea, a flavor of what they kind of do. So we're going to roll video now uh, of um, some of stuff. I studied operatic singing for eight years and I'm soprano. <laughs> There's going to be like loads of cackling in this video, guys. You have been warned. <laughs> I've been loving a lot of stuff and I've been doing a lot of stuff and I want to share my favorites with you right now. So I finally managed to get my boyfriend to do my makeup. <laughs> Fantastic. So we have two very different people. We're 
very much in fashion and one playing with character. Um, Connie, you, how did you actually come up with the whole, the whole thing that you were doing? Okay, I've always loved Disney, if you could have guessed from that little video. Um, I've always been really into blogging. The internet's always been a big part of my life. I made a lot of my friends on there. Um, YouTube actually came about in my first year of uni. I was talking to some of my online friends, and I told them that I could do Disney princess impressions. So they said, you have to prove it. I posted a video on YouTube. I didn't expect anyone except my friends online to see it. But I came back a few weeks later, and the positive response was so overwhelming. And the fact that there were other people who were into this in the same way I was, um, it was really inspiring. So I decided I, I kind of found a place that made me feel comfortable, and it was YouTube. Um, what sort of reaction did you get when you, when you first started? Um, people are generally very positive, and because I'm very fandom-based, um, YouTube is my way of interacting with the fandoms I'm a part of. Uh, so it's very friendly. People, are, they just want to get involved. They want to be friends, and that's what I'm here for. So, um, you're obviously um, in, a, in a different world, in more in kind of fashion, lifestyle. Um, did you consciously do this yourself, or did you create a character, or did you... I mean, how much of it are you, and how much of it is it about really pr producing content in a kind of a, in, in a, in a fashion? So I first started my channel when I moved from Canada to England, and I knew no one, and I wanted to find a way to kind of get involved in a new community, and I discovered blogs and YouTube, and that's how I started. So the whole thing was such a natural progression, and it has been me from the very beginning, and it's really interesting to look back on my videos when I was 19 to what I am now, because I feel like I've really grown up on, on YouTube, and my audience has really grown up with me as well, so yeah, I'd say it's, it's me. But, but <laughs> what's interesting is that how professional it's all become. You know, you're now with, with Storm uh, Agency, their Storm has its own division to deal with, yes. you know, content creators like yourselves. Yeah. Um, uh, and, you, and you must get so much incoming from brands when you want to be associated with what you're doing. I mean, how far do you think you can take it? Do you want to go uh, onto mainstream television, or, uh, or do you, are you happy with being online? I mean, or, or you, do you think it's, this is where it is mm. now? I mean, for me, when I first started, I wasn't thinking of this as a career at all, and it just sort of grew into that. And then, obviously, like you said, I'm represented by Storm, and all of these really exciting opportunities have been coming up, and it's just kind of like, okay, I'll try it, I'll do it, I'll, you know. So, I, I don't really, I have a lot of goals, obviously, on and off YouTube, and I mean, the world is your oyster, I always say. So, yeah, I mean, TV, why not? Film, why not? Why not? Anything. Exactly. I mean, Rene, you, mu you must think this is just um, a wonderful new explosion of, of formats and, and content. Uh, and, we've, and what's interesting, actually, is that you're not just um, dealing with YouTube or whatever, but you're, you know, Facebook, anybody who wants the content, you can talk to. Yeah, sure. And, and first of all, I would like to say how modest both of you are, and that's a, 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 a trait that, that most YouTubers and social talent you know, you have because you're hugely influential, right? You're very influential, you have very loyal audience, and, you know, just saying here that you grow into it is much more than that. You're so professional, and, and because of that audience, we have other social platform and digital platform, of course, want the talent to move from one platform to the other because they can move the audience with them. Right. And we see that all the time. And part of the strategy talk we have with talent is very much, what do you want to become? Do you want to be you? Or do you want to build a franchise like Martha Stewart? Do you build, build formats that can travel from YouTube to Netflix, etc.? So that's very important. And of course, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's a new world. But that, that's a very good point. So, you know, you can take the audience. But, I mean, how fickle is the audience, for instance? I mean, Connie, you know, you're doing a lot of cosplay, that kind of thing. The, uh, the audience typically, you know, moves very, very quickly, does, does, doesn't it? Do you feel you have to follow the audience or do you, are you leading it? Um, I feel my main responsibility with my audience is to just stay fresh. I don't ever want to just continuously be pushing out the same stuff. I want them to keep entertained, yeah. and so far that's going okay. Um, and I, you see the same people pop up, just these loyal followers. Um, 
and you get it's just it's a very different relationship to the celebrity relationship as well because we're on such a close platform. Um, they don't get bored so easily because we can communicate with each other in a way that uh, like traditional celebrities can't. Um, so I don't feel so much pressure to like make sure they stay around because it sounds. It sounds silly, but they are like friends more yeah. than just followers. Because in, in reality, you're actually still at university. You're in yeah. your last year of university. Mm -hmm. um, do you think this is going to be a career now going forward? A hundred percent. I mean, if, I, if you'd asked me that two years ago, I would have said Psh, no. Um, but a hundred percent, this is my career now. Um, and it's it's blowing up. Who knows where it's going to go um, when I finish Does it university. have anything to do with your studies? I mean, what are you studying? I mean, I am doing film studies. So, right. I, in fact, I'm doing my dissertation on YouTube. So, um, and the process of Are you doing a dissertation YouTubers. on yourself? I'm not, <laughs> but I can submit my channel as research. So, that's a big plus. What does your tutor think about it all? Um, she doesn't know yet. She'll find out in two weeks' time. She doesn't know. She doesn't know yet. At university doesn't know. In two weeks. Um, we're going to be doing YouTubers for our class, and then she'll find out. Stay, uh, <laughs> I mean, what about you? I mean, obviously, you know, you're working with Storm now, and, and those guys, are, you know, massive professionals, and they know exactly what's going on. But, I mean, uh, it's very interesting to me as an obs outside observer. I'm not in that world at all. But the uh, uh, models now are asked to have a kind of a shtick, you know, to be digital or to whatever. But you're coming from the other direction, aren't you? Yeah. You're, um, you know, you're in fashion, but you're also a content maker. Um, what, what, what's, what's been your impression about going it's to that really world? It's really interesting, actually, because I didn't know that until a couple of months ago, and someone said, all the models want what you have, like an Instagram following. I'm like, well, I really want their body. So it's like, is it even yet? You want their know. bodies, they want your content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I just think it's so important to have that social connection with your audience. I mean, people aren't just interested in a pretty face anymore. They want yeah. to know the person and they want to be invested and follow you. And like I said, people have known me since I was 19 and it's just a, it's a completely different thing. I mean, there's obviously still lots of work for models and things like that, but it's just interesting to see regular people just building their own careers out of being them themselves. What's the sort of feedback loop from your audience? Do, you, um, do they sort of reply to you and you, do you um, follow them about that, where they want to go with the kinds of things you produce? Or, or how much of it are you, you just deciding it's got to be this way? I mean, you can't be too close-minded to things. I've recently been doing a bit of a rebrand on my channel and it's been, it's been quite difficult but very interesting because you can't just put stuff in front of your audience and they're going to eat it up. No, it doesn't work like that. They tell you, and you know, to an extent it is my, my channel, but it's our channel. So if they're not watching it, there's no point of me doing this stuff that they're not going to watch. So you have to find that balance, um, which has been a really interesting challenge for me. Yeah. But it's going well. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, at the end of the day, people have got to you know, make money, make a living. Um, you know, you, and we're now entering a very interesting era now, aren't we, in terms of, you know, YouTube is going YouTube Red, subscription-based, uh, Facebook video is taking off. Um, what's, what are the kind of the future formats uh, that you're interested in? Where do you think the, the, the prime area of, of, of the content business is going to go in terms of the actual sort of the money-making side of the business? I think from a, from a commercial point of view, I think it's very important to create formats. Uh, formats can travel, formats can be monetized, uh, but also the professionalism that we are seeing now raised uh, in a completely different level than two years ago, where there is awareness among the YouTubers that when they create content, it needs to be very, very clean. You cannot have a Coca-Cola button there without permission. You cannot sit with a Starbucks uh, T-shirt without getting permission. All these things suddenly is elevating to a very professional level because they want to make a living. I mean, your, your point before, no, this, this is definitely my career, mm -hmm. that's what's happening right now. So we are looking into that. We're investing money into content uh, that can work uh, in, on that level where we can monetize it. But you're also, I mean, there's been a big issue recently, uh, uh, certainly in the news, around ad blocking uh, and things like that. Um, I mean, do you think that um, this, is a, this is a format a, 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 that can be to, to so, get away from the whole ad blocking thing? Because effectively what you're doing is you're, 
creating content, often with sponsorship or you're mentioning brands. Um, it's content creation as opposed to I think, you know, content plus advertising. Right? I think this is a very, very interesting question and ad blocking is, as a discussion also among content uh, producers is, is a big thing right now. I mean, we have had a, a, a kind of unwritten rule in, in, in the last 50 years that we get for exchange of content, we are served uh, ads. Among the younger demographics, that kind of unwritten rule is not accepted. They haven't signed that. So PewDiePie came out with a, a little survey the other day that he, that he published on his blog. 40% of his audience are ad blogging. Right? That's insane yeah. if that's you know, the, the livelihood of, of, of him right? and the rest of you. So I think we need to find some model, either it's a subscription-based model like Red or Netflix or whoever has subscriptions where these amazing talent will get paid or we need to find a smart way of integrating uh, brands into content. And I think it's the whole value chain is the way you guys are working, the way the platform accept brands, and the way brands are thinking uh, advertising. Because I mean, the traditional value exchange won't work with millennials. When you're, Estee, when you're creating content, um, I mean, let, let's, let, let me ask you a direct question. Let's hear it. Are you, you, know, are you paid to mention a brand or uh, those kinds of things, or are you, is it fairly obvious around the sponsorship as aspect? Or yes. Not? You are. I have no shame saying that I do sponsored videos and I get paid to work with brands. It's my career. I mean, I, this is my job. I have an assistant. I'm doing tons of different projects all the time. I, at the end of the day, like we, the creators have to get paid. We can't do it otherwise. Um, but I obviously do that very carefully and I don't do it all the time and I make sure it's the right fit. And obviously, it's all disclosed and everything like that. So it's, it's not something that I'm doing in every single video. My whole channel isn't an advertisement for a brand. Yeah. Um, but the interesting thing is that I pick the brands that I work with. And I think people would be surprised at how many opportunities get sent through to us that we just completely say, absolutely not. It's not yeah. right. It's not going to work all the time turning down things. So you, yeah, I think as a creator, you really have to think about it carefully. So in, some, in some aspects, actually, what you're doing is you're curating yes. the, the brand sponsorship or the, the interaction with brands. You're curating, you're seen as a, crust, a trusted broker to your audience, right? Yeah, I guess so. And then you, you work with the brand and you come up with a way that it's going to fit with your channel and do it in a creative way that your audience isn't going to completely hate it. Um, and then hopefully the brand's and, happy. And Connie, do you, do you have a similar relationship with your yeah, um, my audience is very young, so I do feel responsible to be to have a lot of integrity um, mm. with brands. I would never ever recommend anything I wasn't really passionate about. I have a lot of control over who I work with and how I work with them, because um, it's really important to me that I I am being responsible. These are young people, and they they probably will buy some of the stuff I recommend. So I have to 100% believe in what I'm advertising. And also, um, I don't know how you do it. Um, they have to know before they click on the video that the video is sponsored. Yes. That's really important, yeah. So you have to be declarative about yeah. it. Yeah. It's in the title, baby. What will you do when your audience <laughs> grows up? Um, well, hopefully, they'll grow up with me. Um, but we'll see. I'd love to do voice acting in the future, and I feel like my audience will be very supportive of that. We're all in very similar little fandoms. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. And how about yourself, um, they, will you, are you going to uh, change as your audience changes or are you going to do it, do you feel that driven in any particular direction? Yeah, I mean, I think what you were saying, it's just crucial to keep things fresh and know your audience. So my audience is mostly 18 to 24, for instance. So they're kind of around my age. So it's just knowing you know, who you're talking to at the end of the day and changing things up and just praying. Do you feel, <laughs> do you feel that, that really it can go in any direction from here on? I hope so. That's the interesting thing is everybody can carve out their own path. I mean, what my other YouTube friends do, like sometimes they would do things that I would think, oh, I'm not, I wouldn't be interested in that, for instance, presenting. But that's exactly what they want to do. Everybody can pick their own path, which is really interesting. Love it. Well, it's been fascinating unpacking this world, which is also brand new for me as well. And uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, please thank our panel.
Fantastic. Thank you.